morning, good afternoon, good evening, uh, into the A&P. This is uh, Mr. Miles Horowitz, our first of many uh, webcasts over at Material. Today's special guest, musical guest, is the Bee Gees with Staying Alive, classic from the 1970s. Uh, kind of appropriate since we're going to be talking about homeostasis today and biological balance. So I'm going to jam out here for a second. You know how to do the shuffle, right? All right, enough of that. We'll, we'll come back to them later. So the whole point of these uh, videos is so that, you know, if we do go into pandemic mode, uh, you can uh, watch these and hopefully you'll watch these ahead of time. So what we're going to do today, I'm going to break this up into probably, I think, like five separate small videos. But this is uh, the human body and orientation. And so I'll be kind of going through. So our objective is we're going to explain how structure complements function, name the levels of structural organization, list necessary life necessary functions of life, survival needs of the body, we're going to define homeostasis, use correct terms, and all that good stuff. So the first thing we have to understand is what anatomy is. And so essentially anatomy is just the study of body parts. And so we'll talk more about that. So if we're studying the heart, the brain, your eyes, whatever, physiology is function. And so those of you that have me for biology, structure determines function, structure, structure function determines structure. So the heart beats, so it's like a pump. They complement each other. So structure does dictate function. Function. So we talk about physiology. What we do is we focus on the events at the cellular and molecular level, and these are a lot of your chemical and physical principles. I used to do a whole chapter on chemistry, but since we are uh, off by a couple weeks, we're just going to kind of roll with it. But we're going to look at cellular and molecular levels. So we look at the levels of structure and organization. I'm going to have to move my face here for a little bit. Uh, we're going from largest to, or smallest to largest. We got the atoms. So things like carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, to molecules like water and carbon dioxide, your organelle. Then we get into the cellular level like t um, nerve cell, muscle cell, neuron. Then a bunch of cells make a tissue, so like nervous tissue. And then a bunch of tissues make an organ like the heart. So the heart's made of cardiac, your organ system, and organism. And so we'll review these. You should have got these in biology. So, so here's your necessary life functions. Got to maintain boundaries, so inside versus outside, so like your skin. Movement, internal, external. So movement, you may think of muscle, but also your blood has to move. Peristalsis, when the digestive system materials move. Responsiveness, sense change and respond. Uh, digestion, metabolism, which is all the chemical reactions in the body. Uh, excretion, reproduction, and growth. So if you're going to take notes from this lecture, I would pause the video here and maybe jot these down. But hopefully when we're face-to-face, -face, I can spend more time. If we're not face-to-face, -face, then I will go into more detail. So survival needs, what you need to survive. You need to be able to take in nutrients. So you need to be able to eat, right? So nutrients, those nutrients become the building blocks of your body. Oxygen, oxygen is important for you to get uh, energy from cellular respiration. Water, right? Major chemical reactions occur in water. Water is important for metabolism. You got your normal body temperature, 98.6, 37 degrees Celsius. So this year we have these new handy dandy little thermometers. We point them at your forehead. And this says that I'm 96.4. I don't think these are calibrated, but if I try it on my arm, 97.1. Whoops. So anyways, temperature is important. We'll be talking more about this today as we, you know, life during Corona virus. And then atmospheric pressure is important for you to breathe. So homeostasis is going to be the focus of this. So in homeostasis, this is your body's ability to maintain a stable environment. Right, so you've got a receptor, control center, effector, and I'm going to have you draw some pictures here in a little bit. So the receptor is the input. So think of your five senses as a receptor. So I'm drinking my coffee here because it's about almost nine o'clock in the morning here on Tiffin's beautiful South Side in room 102. So the receptor, if I grab this cup, it's hot. So the receptors are going to send that message up to my control center, which is often the brain. Sometimes there are some reactions that your spinal cord can just control. But for the most part, your brain is going to integrate that information and send it out to the effector. So if I just decided to open up this little coffee and dump it on my head, right, why I would do that, who knows, maybe I'm crazy today, the, my skin receptors would sense, okay, I'm burning. The brain would be like, oh, no, move your head. So do not dump hot coffee on your head. Negative feedback is not bad. So don't think of negative as being like uh, something bad, but it's reducing the effect of the stimulus. So negative feedback is suppressing. And so body temperature. So right now it's probably about 90 degrees in my classroom. My body is trying to suppress uh, my internal temperature so it doesn't get above a certain point. 
breathing rate, right? I walked here this morning. I didn't run, but had I ran here this morning, my breathing weight, breathing weight, we don't know what my breathing rate would have been, but it would have tried to bring it back to a set point. Blood sugar level, right? I went in this morning and I ate like a whole bowl of Fruity Pebbles. My blood sugar would be out of control. Positive feedback is very rare and this increases the response. And so things like labor contractions and blood clotting, these are situations that occur, uh, they're not happening every day, but they increase the response because they usually want to get a situation over. And so anytime you have a negative and positive feedback, any times that your body is out of that homeostatic imbalance, that when disease occurs. And so what are the components? Um, hopefully you can see this. I may have to, okay. So um, you're gonna have to be able to draw this at one point. So th these are the components of homeostatic control. So you may wanna pause the video here. Let me see what my next slide is real quick. I may be getting ahead of myself. I maybe wanna draw this picture instead. So let me go this back to the picture real quick. So you've got the stimulus. As you can see, it's like a seesaw or teeter-totter, right? So there's your variable. Stimulus produces a change right? You've got changes detected, the receptor inputs information, sends to the brain, the brain is going to start to cause a response, the effector to bring it back to that balance. And so what I'm going to have you do, I'm going to kind of go through these, you may want to draw this in your um, oil, or yeah, sorry, your oil, that's wrong class, in your uh, notebook. So homeostasis again, you've got your variable, you've got an imbalance, stimulus produces the change, Receptor picks it up. The brain is going to sense that and it's going to start to try to force that back to that set point. That's your negative feedback. So, um, I think I got some more coming up here. Let me double check. Yeah. All right. So, what are the components? Nervous system and endocrine system are the main components of your homeostatic control. And so when we talk about, I'm going to move my head up here a little bit, uh, communication with the body is essential. So nervous system is fast acting, endocrine is slow. And so we talk about these, um, fast controls your nervous system, endocrine is slow. So things like hormones, right, they carry a message. So here are some basic components. You're not, do not write this down, but this is just so your condition, optimal, and what controls it. So let's just look at blood glucose. So you should have about... Uh, there's the optimal range and it's your endocrine system because pancreas, you know, releasing insulin and glucagon, blood pressure, body temperature. And we're going to go into more detail of these later. So what are the base components? You may just want to draw these as we go. So there is the variable. You can pause and draw. I don't know why these are not lining up like I want. There's your stimulus signal, right? So put in that number one, pause and draw. Two, again, pause and draw. There's your receptor. Receptor senses and monitors the environment. So pause and draw. Three, input information along an afferent, all right, that's going towards the brain to your control center. So pause and draw. Four, or there's your control center. There's your set point. I don't know if I mentioned that in the other one, but that, their set point, again, is the range at which a variable is maintained. Pause and draw here at four. I'll move my face. Don't draw my face. Uh, output, information sent along an efferent. Efferent means an effect. That's where we got effector. So pause and draw. And so um, you should have another arrow there. But let me see if I missed that arrow. Okay, let me go back a little bit. I'm sorry. I'm not going to restart this. So let me go back to the picture that you need. And the lights went out as usual. So... Uh, there you go. So draw it for effector at number five. Pause and draw this so I get the lights back on. All right. And then so for this last one with the effector response, effector feeds it back to that and returns to homeostasis. So, all right. So hopefully you've got that picture kind of drawn out. All right. So overview of a negative feedback mechanism. And so what happens here, uh, regulation of negative feedback, you have that straight line. And then the red line represents your feedback. So something goes up, suppresses it back down, up, then down, up, then down, up, then down. So it's correcting that issue. So negative feedback, what you, we'll do a concept check here. Positive feedback, like I said, increases the response. So if you look at that deviation from the set point, your body temperature starts to go up. Positive feedback is going to keep going up and up and up and up until it reaches a point where the, the stimulus is removed. And so again, negative feedback is normal day to day, positive feedback, and really the only two positive feedback mechanisms I need you to know are um, childbirth and blood clotting. So what is an imbalance? I got two more slides here. Try to keep these to about 10 to 11 minutes. Those are probably too long. 
So homeostatic imbalance is basically a disturbance in homeostasis. So it's also known as a disease. So as you get older, your control systems become less efficient. So I'm old, so my body is less efficient. And so as you age, you may be risk for illness increases. Also, changing changes associated with age appears, so like gray hairs and stuff like that. So as you age, your body's ability to maintain homeostasis uh, kind of kind of uh, slows down. So here's our concept check. You may want to pause here and answer these. What is homeostasis? Why is it called dynamic equilibrium? So homeostasis is just biological balance, and it's dynamic equilibrium because it's constantly dynamic means moving. It's constantly maintaining equilibrium. So it's going along that set point. So hopefully you can go through, describe the components of the homeostasis loop. So just that picture that you drew, use an example to put them in order. Um, we're not quite there yet. The, 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 the benefits of a negative feedback me mechanism, they allow you to maintain life. And so what they do is they help regulate a system. And in what direction does a variable change result of negative feedback? It's trying to reduce it down. It's trying to bring it back to a set point. Positive feedback often is you're trying to get a threatening situation over quickly. And so usually in a positive feedback, it's going to go away from the set point. So positive is going in, say, like a forward direction. Negative is going in a back direction or backward direction. And then the last one, what are the risks associated with positive feedback is that with a positive feedback mechanism, you're increasing the stimulus so much that it could become life-threatening. So, for example, in childbirth, if the child, you know, does not pass through the birth canal quickly enough, right, you, you can have um, complications. If... So any times the positive feedback, think of if any of you are allergic to anything, that is often a positive feedback um, situation that is, that is that's out of control. So if you can draw the two graphs, I look back at the two that I showed you in the PowerPoint where the negative feedback is going this way, positive is going up. And then homeostatic imbalance, that's just another name for a, a disease. So anyways, I got that down to about over 12 minutes. It's too long. Um, let's see if I'm going to put my... Uh, BG's back on. So hopefully if you have any questions, email me. Uh, I'll be back in a little bit for our next uh, video over in St. This is me signing off from 102 in the beautiful, perfect, beautiful Southside, room 102.